So Brian, talk to me, what was the inspiration of you starting, getting into the cigar business? It was all about passion, really. I wanted to create a cigar that was unique in the industry. Uh, with my wine knowledge, trying to create something that was totally different, uh, something that would blend well with a big Cabernet or Merlot. So the, the passion ignites, what was the first step? First step was really trying to immerse myself in the, in the Cuban culture. I figured the best place to do that was down in Little Havana in Miami. Why was it important to go understand the culture? I want to understand where everybody was coming from, really where the culture started, where the, the, the heritage from the, the Cubans that uh, started making cigars, all the families that are now Cuban families uh, in Nicaragua and Dominican uh, that are making wonderful cigars. I wanted to understand really what they were doing. I figured the best place to do that, the easiest place to do that was in Miami. After Miami, you ended up going to the Dominican Republic you told me before. I did, yeah. I went to, uh, so we were, we were down in Miami just for a little bit. We found a wonderful little factory uh, called, uh, in, in English, it's, uh, it's uh, El Titan de Bronze. It means, uh, uh, well, in Spanish, it's El Titan de Bronze, uh, or ETB for short. Uh, Sandy Cobus is the owner, and we met her. Uh, we told her we were going down to see Carlito Fuente. She was very impressed. She had met Carlito before. Uh, they were friends, and uh, I just told her we were going down, my wife and I, to visit with him. He had invited us down there. And I went down there to really understand, from his point of view, what passion he had. He's so passionate about making cigars. So now you're in Santiago, yeah. and he tells you the family history. What happened there? So he, you know, they didn't make a cigar for 100 years. I figure who else is better than Carly Fuente to understand where the where, what he, why he does what he does. Uh, he would love to make a red wine. I would love to make a great cigar. So I told him what I was trying to do, and we uh, we came back. It was a it was a wonderful visit. Uh, got to see the factory, and just I just really was just floored by uh, his hospitality and the, uh, the warmth of, uh, of his family. So we uh, so we came back to uh, Miami after that, went back to uh, ETB, and uh, met again with Sandy Cobus, and she said, Brian, you have got the passion. Let me help you make a cigar. And I found that to be a wonderful place to do it. It's, uh, back then it was only eight rollers. Uh, they all came from Cuba, they're from, mainly all from Partagas. Uh, they all roll in the Cuban style. They, uh, each one of them makes the cigar uh, by hand, one at a time. Uh, they don't uh, use any machinery, it's all made by hand, so I just love the fact that that's where I, my, cigar, my cigar can be made, and I'm just really passionate about it. From that moment back from Santiago, and talking to Carlito, uh, for the first blend to come out, what time frame are we looking at? It took us nine months, really, to do it. Uh, Willie Herrera, which is her son-in-law, uh, was the, the master blender, and he helped me actually create the cigar. I said, I want to create a cigar that was blend that would blend very well with a uh, big red wine, mainly Cabernet or Merlot. Uh, since I'm a winemaker, that's really what my passion was. I wanted to bring that technology from the wine industry into the cigar industry. Uh, and I figured the best thing to do is let's create something that's unique and different that nobody else has done. Nobody's blended a cigar to go with red wine. So, okay. the, so the first line is? First line we came up with, it was called Chinook Cellars Private Reserve. We used some of the same technology that we used, uh, the graphics from the, the wine bottle, and we created our cigar band based around that. Talk to me about the launch. It was very humble beginnings, you told right, me before. It took us uh, very humble beginnings. Uh, it's, it's amazing. So we go, uh, we finally get into our, our first show at the ICSPR show in Vegas at the time. Uh, spending five days there promoting my cigar, uh, showing them what we're trying to do, I got three accounts. It was very, very humbling. I was very taken back from that. Uh, so, not to be discouraged, I continued on and said, I'm going to create an even better cigar for uh, blending through red wine. So, we spent another nine months doing this process, trying to, after we handed out samples to people, trying to create uh, a blend that was even better than we created before. So, you never gave up the private reserve, then you come and uh, work on the blend and you come up with your second brand, the second we, line. We, we came up with a second uh, name for a cigar mm -hmm. because I wanted to create a, a second band for this cigar that we had already created just to distinguish what it was. 
So we sat in our favorite little restaurant uh, here in Napa Valley, my wife and I did. Um, we sat there for three or four hours going through all these wine terms uh, that we found that were already either taken by a cigar or had been used before. Uh, and we were kind of disheartened the fact we couldn't find something of it. And my wife was talking about, let's look at things about the terms about what tobacco and what wine has in common. I said, they both have the earth in common. What is that? Terroir. Terroir is a French term that's used in the wine industry to, just, to talk about where the, the grapes are grown on the hillsides or, or the valley floor near the, the creeks and the, and the, the, the valleys of the, uh, the wine uh, growing region. That same thing happens to tobacco. So, talk to me about the ring. So, we took that and it became our, our second band. We called it Chinook Hills Private Reserve Terroir. And that's what we launched for the second show the following year. Uh, and it was a hit. Now you're seeing success. Now we're seeing success. And things are taking off. We've now got 30 or 40 accounts. Uh, people are really understanding my passion. Uh, I'm, to them, you know, mostly I was just another scarred guy, just trying to create a buzz. Uh, but I had something unique. I had I had 35 years in the wine industry, trying to understand then how to blend a cigar to go with a wine, and that's really what my, my passion was all about. Uh, so we created uh, the, the the second band with the terroir, and then I said I've got to take this cigar to a different level. I'm competing with guys that have been in this business for 100 years. I got to do something. Different. I've got to step out a little bit bigger than what I'm doing now. And you're seeing success already. I am. I've, uh, we're up to 85 stores right now. Mm -hmm. uh, my my goal within three and a half years uh, was to do 100 stores. Uh, I'm on track right now to do that. And What's the vision? Well. The vision next two three years. In addition to the numbers, what is it? Still a student of the culture. It is. It is. It's all about the passion and the culture of the industry. I'm not trying to be. A, a big superstar. I'm just trying to create a, the best cigar that I can for what uh, for what the industry is uh, able to take. And I'm very, very uh, humbled uh, that I'm a part of this industry at this time.